Hi everybody, this is Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com and I've got this week's iPad app of the week. Now you know an app has really taken a place in my workflow when it shows up down here in the dock. And today the one I want to show you is not a new one, but it's one that I've just begun using called Pocket Informant HD. This is the iPad version. There's also one for the iPhone. I'll show you that in just a minute. But when you fire it up, it's basically a calendar and personal information app that uh, really does a lot more than just show you your calendar. Now, here's the basic today screen, and over here on this side you'll get the uh, the hourly calendar for that day. And you notice I don't I've got a fairly light day, although I've got some things I have to do, but I don't put them on my calendar unless they're appointments that I have to be somewhere. Uh, these are a snapshot of, of all the things that you've got going on that week. For example, one of my alarms this week is that uh, I have to do an iPad app of the week today and I want to try to get that done by 11. And so I've just begun using this. I haven't put in all the things that I do, but uh, what I'm going to begin doing is starting to put weekly activities in here and uh, they'll show up right down here. But now this is just today's look. Now here you'll notice I've got to that tasks and it'll sync with uh, other services. I'm using Toodledo T-O-O-D-L-E-D-O. -O -E I'll put that as a thing right down below so you can read it. But uh, Toodledo is a, a task syncing application. You can open up an app. Uh, you can get an app for just Toodledo, or you can use it here with this or many other calendar and PIM apps. PIM stands for Personal Information Manager. And then up here you get your e events of the day. You can search for them. You can add things over here. Add a... Uh, there we go, add a task, we'll cancel that, or you can add an event. Notice when you add these things, it gives you all the space where you can enter those in. I'll look at the task thing again. It's, you can set alarms, repeating alarms, um, which is what I have for this one, because this is a weekly thing that I do. This gives you the list of your calendars and task lists. That kind of thing. The sync button will sync your information with the different services you use. For example, you can sync with Google Calendar, um, Toodledo, and things like that. Now, if you go down here, this is the calendar view. And notice it has these tabs, so it looks just like a notebook. It's very attractive. It gives you the monthly small calendar, so you get a quick glance of it. And of course, that scrolls. Now, this highlighted part in the settings, you can set your work day. I usually get started around 8 a.m., and uh, sometimes I'm going well into the evening. You can notice I've got a number of appointments in the evening. So I set my ending time at 10. I'm not going to likely make very many appointments after 10 o'clock at night. And then it's got the different views here. List view, day view, week view, month view. We'll show you those, what it looks like real quick. Uh, the week view gives today's date in a large format so you can see it. And then the next six days in a small format. You can set that up in the calendar you can if you want set it so that a week view is always Sunday through Monday or Monday through Sunday but I like it with today and then the next six days because that's really the way I'm working I'm, I don't really care that much about what happened yesterday usually and then here's the month view wait for it and it'll populate now this is drawing these days from the internal calendar um, if you look on the help side it says it doesn't sync with it but it actually does now and I'm not sure why they haven't updated that or or what's going on there uh, but when you look on the information, it, it, asks, it acts like it doesn't do that, but it does. Now here are your tasks. Notice I've got this one due today, due the iPad app of the week. Tomorrow I've got a few things that I'm supposed to do. And then these are undated tasks that I'm planning to do. I've got a couple reviews, and I'm planning to migrate back over to Google Calendar so that I can use this more often. See, that's really changing. I, I've switched away from Google Calendar uh, to uh, Mobile Me. But I like this app so much, I'm actually going to go back and take all the time and effort to do that because I like the app so much. Now these are a couple of overdue things that, you know, they weren't significant or real serious things that I missed them. But you notice how it shows it up in red to say, hey, you've, you've missed a couple tasks, you need to get that finished. And then, of course, down here we have our settings tab. I'm not going to go into every screen here, but you notice it's got your general settings. Um, that gives you information. Uh, it has your appearance settings. You can change the way things look. Today settings, there's just a few things in there. Uh, calendar settings, it'll tell you how you can set up your calendar. Uh, task settings, so basically there's two kinds of information in here, like appointments, dates, and then tasks, which are, you know, to-do list. And then, of course, you have your sync settings here. Um, 
and then the advanced is some other uh, uh, features of it. But I really like the app. I think this is an excellent app. And now I told you that uh, they have an iPhone app, and you can set it up where it will sync on your iPhone. And so I'll pull my iPhone out here so you can see it. Notice I've got it right there. And um, I'm not sure what that is. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I've got it set up where it pops up here into my uh, to-do list, and it automatically syncs with to uh, your task list, rather. But here you've got the same thing. You've got your today list the calendar view with the different views. I like the list view on the iPhone. Uh, your tasks. Here you can search for things and then of course you got your settings there as well. Now one problem that this does have is there's Pocket Informant HD which is the iPad version and then there's Pocket Informant which is the iPhone or iPod Touch version. You know I think that's cheap. I hate when companies do that. You know just make one universal app. Don't, don't gouge your your uh, customers but you know, big deal. I, I honestly, I didn't pay for the, the, the desktop version. I liked it so much that I went ahead and bought the iPhone version. I, uh, you know, the company sent me a, a code where I could test this one out. And, uh, you know, I liked it so much I went ahead and bought it. So for me, it wasn't that big a deal. But for you, that's going to be expensive to buy both apps. And so, you know, that's one thing I really don't like. I wish they'd just make one universal app that uh, everyone can use. You know, they, they're so similar that it really isn't fair to have to pay twice for it. Um, but if that's my only complaint about this, then to be honest with you, that's not a real big complaint. You know, money is a significant thing, and these aren't cheap apps. Twelve ninety nine for the iPhone app, and I think the uh, desktop app, I'm not going to give you the price because I can't remember exactly since I didn't have to pay for it. But uh, uh, it's still, it, it's a very good app. I really like using it. I think it's going to make me more productive. Uh, it's very useful. And so that's why I wanted to make it this week's iPad app of the week. Thanks for watching. This has been Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com.